The problem comes that when you're at your low and you say, you know what, I might as well just stop praying. Because you know what, shaitan comes and says, you're just like, your salah is terrible. You're, you're, you're committing this sin. You're committing that sin. You're just a hypocrite. You're going to go pray. So just stop praying. Oh, and while you're at it, you might as well take off your hijab too because you just, you're just a terrible person. And then when you start to give in to those thoughts, that's what happens is you just start going lower and lower and lower. And that's the whole objective, isn't it? I mean, that's his objective, is to make, make you go into despair. So really my advice is just stay alive, stay alive spiritually, and you'll, like, a, like the Prophet said, Iman rises and falls, you will go back up. Everything in life, there's nothing stays the same. But if you stop breathing when you're low, then that's the problem. That's when a person drowns. And a lot of people having faith crisis because they don't understand how, this question of why do bad things happen to good people, and they, they, they can't, like they can't reconcile it they, and it makes them lose their faith um, or, or they say things like God doesn't love me and they just lose their faith um, first of all the reason why I quoted that hadith is because that hadith that I quoted the ajabun li amri mu'min the matter of a believer is strange that hadith teaches us that bad things never happen to good people that in fact whatever happens to a believer is good for him or her and it has everything to do with my response Okay, but that's a different way of looking at the world. See, if I, if I see everything that happens to me as a way to get closer to Allah, then everything becomes good for me, even if it's painful. Make sense? So, um, when you get a shot, when you get a shot, suppose you're sick and you, you need a shot of medicine. And this medicine is going to actually save your life but it has to be through a shot. What are, you gonna, what are you gonna say? Okay, right? Yes, there's some temporary pain, but it's curing me. The, the needle is actually, has medicine that's curing me. That's a different way of understanding versus a, a child who doesn't understand. They, they're just gonna look at that needle and just scream and cry and just be angry, right? Because they don't understand that it's medicine. So it has to do with Number one, it has to do with understanding that Allah, Allah, um, everything Allah gives us as a believer is good for us, even when it comes through a needle, even if it comes and I don't understand it. Another example is if you, if we go outside now and your mom is picking you up, she's picking you up, she's driving, and you ask her where are we going, and she says just wait and see. Are you going to phone the police because you're really scared? Are you gonna like be like, yo, um, 911, I I'm being taken somewhere, I don't know where it is. Why aren't you gonna call the police? Because you, you trust your mom, that's it. But if it was a stranger that you didn't trust, you'd call the police. Do you understand? So the reality is that sometimes Allah does things in our life and we don't understand. We don't understand. He's taking us somewhere, we don't know where. But if you trust Allah, then you're not going to be scared. You're not going to be anxious and worry. You may not know, like in this example, you don't know your mom's taking you, but you trust your mom completely. You're not worried that she's going to hurt you. But we don't have enough trust in Allah. This is the problem. So a lot of it has to do with getting to know Allah. Really. Like the answer to your question is, these people, these youth, these people, it's about getting to know who Allah is. Because the more we know Allah, the more we put our trust in Him. If we know, first of all, Allah is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Allah is, he's, He has so much mercy for us, even more than a mother for her child. If we knew that, if we really knew that, then we wouldn't be worried. You understand? Husn al-dhanna billah. What's husn al-dhanna billah? It means, just like remember you said you're not scared of your mom. Why? Because you know she, she has your best interest in mind. You're not worried she's going to take you, throw you in a ditch and leave you. You have a good opinion of your mom. See, husn al billah means you have a good opinion of Allah. You know that whatever Allah is doing with you is for your own good. That's, that's part of knowing Allah. 
And when you know who Allah is, that He has your best interests in mind, that He's not going to hurt you, then it becomes easier to cope, if you, even when you don't understand, even when you have to take a needle, even when you don't know exactly where you're going, but you have a full hope and trust in Allah, that He has your best interests in mind. So I, I mean, that's really what it, what it is. It has to do with knowing who Allah is, and, and then putting your trust in Him, and knowing that he, he's not gonna, he's not gonna make you get lost or hurt you. Everything Allah does is for our own good. The, the matter of a believer is strange. Everything is good for them.